What's up, .NET developers? Are you always looking for some new tips to better your debugging experience when you're building your .NET apps? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over some of the new enhancements that are coming to the debugging experience for .NET right here on Learning .NET and C Sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of what's new in .NET and C Sharp, where I'm going over all of the cool things that are coming out in .NET 8 and C Sharp 12, all the way up to .NET Conf, which is in November of 2023. And if you're liking the videos here, be sure to do a few things for me. Like the video, comment down below to tell me what sort of things you're building with .NET 8, and also be sure to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends so they can do the same. And one of the things that as .NET developers, we are very accustomed to, and it's part of our day-to-day, minute-to-minute even in some cases, is the debugging experience, right? So we're inside our IDE of choice, Visual Studio, JetBrains Writer, VS Code even with the new uh, C Sharp extension. And being a developer and debugging is something that we have to do constantly. And there are some enhancements that are coming in .NET 8, which I think are really, really interesting as it pertains to making the debugging experience a bit more clear. And before I kind of go over what that feature is, let's talk a little bit about what's actually being used under the hood. So there's been some enhancements made to a couple of um, really, really important heavily used objects and types that uh, exist in the .NET ecosystem. We'll go over them in a second and to make the debugging experience a bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over what uh, is being implemented uh, and talk a little bit about what the experience was and what the experience is going forward. So let's actually share my screen out real quick. So I'm inside of, of Visual Studio and one of the things that I'd like to call out is that um, in .NET 8, the .NET team has implemented um, customiz customization attributes for a lot of types um, in the .NET space. And some of those types um, specifically are HTTP context, HTTP request and response, claims principle, and web application. And we'll take a look at what that actually looks like. But basically what um, custom attributes actually allow you to do is to configure what properties, types, and things like that um, how they display or if they're displayed at all in your debugger windows, like your locals and your watch uh, windows inside of Visual Studio. So let's just take a look at an example of what this actually means. So I have a console app here. So this console app, um, it's nothing crazy. It's just um, some code that basically adds some key values into a hash table that I've defined down here. And let's take a look at some code really quick. So basically what we have here is we have um, this uh, my hash table type that I've created. And basically what it has uh, what it has is these debugger display and the de debugger type proxy um, attributes on top of these particular classes. And what these do is this allow me to um, hide or show particular things inside of our debugger windows. So instead of me trying to go over and define what each of these things actually do, let's actually just run in Visual Studio um, what this experience looks like. So I have just one breakpoint set, which is at the end of our main function. And in a second, this will spin up a console and that console will um, it'll stop at that particular breakpoint. And, and once it's actually uh, fired, we're, let's just, um, I'm gonna minimize that. And then if we take a look at our locals window, as you can see here, so we have a couple of things. So we have our, um, we have these items added to this hash table. And if we go down here, let me just open this up a little bit and then I can zoom in. As you can see here, I have these keys and this one and two, right? So if I go up, as you can see, I've added one and two here. And so that's nothing really crazy, but we can actually configure how these actually look like. And how I'm doing that is in this debugger display. So passing in the value in the name, and so on and so forth. And then I can have a count and things like that. So let's actually hop back out and see what this actually looks like if I wanted to modify some of these things. Let's, let's stop this here. So if I scroll down, I have this debugger browsable state, right? And it said it's collapsed right now. But what if I wanted to not have the key show up at all? I can actually change this to, I can actually change this to never, for instance. And if I run this again, uh, that key, those key values will actually not show up when our breakpoint fires. So we can actually validate that here. So if I go down to the hash table, 
as you can see, there are no properties on here. I can still go into raw view and, and get into there, but at the top level, they're not there anymore, which is really, really cool. So it allows us to um, get a more uh, clear description or basically filter out the noise as it pertains to when we're going through debugging. So that's what the current thing is. This has been around for a long time. This isn't just available in C Sharp, it's available in F Sharp and even C++ in some cases. So let's actually take a look at what this means for .NET, specifically ASP.NET Core developers. But So first, let's take a look at what the experience looks like um, with .NET 7 today. So I'm going to set this as my startup project and let's just close this and open this up. So this is just a simple web API. So, um, you know, add controllers in my, in my program and things like that. But as you can see, I'm adding a singleton for the HTTP context accessor. So if I go to my controllers, um, as you can see, I'm using dependency injection and construction injection to get um, a HTTP context because that's um, one of the types that's been um, flagged with these attributes. So let's take a look, let's run this. So if we run this really quick, this is gonna pop open a window. Inside that window, the, so that window's not gonna do anything, the, but our breakpoint's gonna get fired and we're gonna be able to see what that experience looks like in the debugger. So as you can see here, so we have this HTTP context accessor, right? And then we have this HTTP context. So if we zoom in here, there is a, a lot of obfuscated stuff here. Let's actually um, hop open and zoom in so we can actually Pop them with these things. So look at these connects. We have to open up all these individual properties and filter and play around with everything, right? And this could be a really confusing developer or debugging experience, especially if you're new to debugging HTTP context and trying to figure out um, what certain things do. So the question is, is that how can we be better? How can we get a better experience? Well, in .NET 8, you don't have to do anything specifically to light up those debugging attributes, uh, debugging display attributes that I mentioned earlier. They're done for you by the .NET team. So let's actually just take a look at another example. This is a .NET 8 project with this basically the exact same. So I look at my program, I'm still adding a singleton for the HTTP context successor. And then inside of here, same thing, constructor injection, all that sort of stuff. So if I run this, and we're gonna have the same experience, so it's gonna show us a locals um, and a watch window. And if I zoom in here, let's open this up, as you can see, HTTP context is already looking a bit different. So if we zoom in here, as you can see, like all of those things that were kind of abstracted away, we have them right up at the top level. So I have access to the request and it gives me all this information about the path and the thing. So I don't actually have to drill in deeper and deeper and deeper um, into these different types to be able to get the values that I'm looking for. So this is already like a substantially better debugging experience. And like I mentioned, this is, oh, let me hop out of here. And this is just available. This isn't just available for HTTP context. It's also available for HTTP request and HTTP response and claims and web application. And I believe probably more and more are going to get added if it makes sense. So this is a really quick video. I really hope um, you get some exciting things and some interesting ideas of how you're going to debug better in this particular space. And um, as if I'm a developer, I know your developers will after watching this video. Um, be sure to comment down below if you're excited about these new features that are coming at .NET 8. Share them with with your friends and let me know else we want to see. Uh, that's it for me. Take care.